Thanks for joining us, Tony. Tony Greenstein is here with us to talk about Al Jazeera's new documentary, October 7. The investigative unit of the channel has um, featured evidence from the cameras of Hamas fighters and some Israeli soldiers, as well as interviews, piecing together really a timeline of October 7, what happened when. But Tony, tens of thousands of Gazans have already been slaughtered by the Israeli army and many more will die because of starvation and disease. Why do you think is it important to look back at exactly what happened on October the 7th? Well, it's important to look back for this reason that October the 7th is the pretext for the genocide and the ethnic cleansing. And so I think we need to dismantle the Zionist narrative that this was a second Holocaust, that this was the greatest slaughter of Jews since the Second World War. And furthermore, it was an uncontrolled rape uh, frenzy orchestrated by Hamas with the aim of hurting and destroying and killing as many Jews as possible. In other words, it was nothing to do with the occupation. It was nothing to do with the suffocating siege. It was about the innate anti-Semitism and burning hatred for Jews as Jews by those who were living in the Gaza concentration camp. And that has been the Zionist narrative throughout. And they found it difficult at times, certainly at the beginning, to get their story together. Because you remember 40 beheaded babies, a baked baby, apparently babies being hung on clotheslines. It was all of that. It was... Visiting celebrities continue to be shown babies' cribs and the world continues to be told stories about murdered babies. When you're taking babies, cutting them and tying them together and burning them to death, you're treating them less than an animal. 1,300 people dead, murdered, babies. These bastards put these babies in an oven and put on the oven. We found the kid a few hours later. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken describes the fate of two small children. Family of four, a young boy and girl, six and eight years old, and their parents around the breakfast table. The father, his eye gouged out in front of his kids. The mother's breast cut off. The girl's foot amputated. The boy's fingers cut off before they were executed. And then their executioners sat down and had a meal. That's what this society is dealing with. This story also comes from Yossi Landau and Zaka. An analysis of the evidence suggests that it is also untrue. Of the 782 unarmed victims of October 7, 36 are children, 13 under the age of 12. None died in the circumstances described by Anthony Blinken. There were two babies who died, and one of them was just killed by a stray bullet. Mm. I mean, the, the documentary, I thought it was quite good because it is um, trying to stay with the facts, you know, and it's, it is saying Hamas did commit crimes, and there are some pretty gruesome scenes, actually, about the music festival. You remember when there's a, a group of young people in a, in a bomb shelter, and you can see it, you know, and Hamas goes in and basically executes them. But the, the tenor of the documentary is, you know, Hamas did commit crimes, but not many of the crimes that the Israeli government and the media are pretending it committed. For example, the, the 40 babies, but also it looks at the claim that there was mass uh, widespread and systematic rape, and that is taken apart as well. What, what, what were for you the sort of standout moments from that documentary? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the documentary showed a glimpse of what happens on that day and it it sequenced it so that we understand how it progressed. It's, that has not been done before in any uh, systematic fashion and that was very useful. But uh, as you say, I mean, Hamas uh, aren't nursery school teachers. Yeah. I mean, this was not a children's picnic. It was an exercise where people who went did not expect to come back. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, it, 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 if you like their liberation in it being in their occupiers' territory for the first time, yes, atrocities were committed. Uh, uh, I'm sure, you know, 
you name me a slave revolt where the, uh, where uh, atrocities weren't committed. They were far more bloody affairs. Uh, the, in Haiti, the slave revolt, it killed every single French white person, man, woman, and child. I mean, one could not have defended that, but would one defend the right of the slaves to revolt and to free themselves? Yes. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 Hamas in many ways behaved impeccably uh, compared to it. And it was a story in the Times of Israel. It was on, I think, the 9th of October. I put it on my blog. Where a Hamas fighter goes into a kibbutz home, the father lunges at him with an axe, I think, and he's, he's killed. The mother then attacks and she's killed. And there are two children there with their, I don't know whether th their mother, I think it was. Uh, and a Hamas writer writes on the wall, Hamas does not kill children, uh, and then puts a blanket around them. So, I mean, this idea that they deliberately went to kill the children and so on, I mean, it's totally untrue. And in fact, the statistics prove it. There were two babies. Mm. What I mean, some children were obviously killed and young people were killed. So very they, few. They, they were not, they're not saints. Um, but was interesting, the, um, as you pointed out, the, most of the Hamas fighters did not expect to live after this. They expected mm. to die within a few minutes, uh, hours. That whole aspect of the Israeli army not being prepared. I mean, this is an interesting one and it's being discussed widely as well. The, the documentary um, claims or shows, you know, Israel had warnings, plenty of warnings. Hamas fighters put their videos up with a paraglider, you know, training with the paragliders, etc. Yeah. But they were totally, un they seemed totally unprepared. Some have speculated they let it happen on purpose. The documentary does not. Yeah. Where do you still stand on that? It's, I mean, it was described, or has been described, as the greatest intelligence failure since the Second World War. Uh, it was a massive intelligence failure. Uh, and why? Because of the hubris of the Israelis and also their, their racial arrogance. They did not believe that Hamas was capable of it, coupled with the fact that they trusted that their billion dollar fence with its automatic machine guns, sensors and so on, uh, could, would defeat anything. And yet very low tech drones and paragliders and bulldozers did the job. I mean, it, there were all sorts of lessons to be learned from that. Uh, but no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it was that they were let in. Uh, it, it's inconceivable. Uh, it's much like 9-11, really. I mean, these conspiracy theories, but the political consequences, if it was ever found out that they deliberately let them in, would be too great. Uh, mm. Certainly, I, I, I don't think there's any chance. Yes, they were given warnings. That's, that was the case in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War. No, I, I don't buy into a conspiracy theory of that nature. Mm. So were there any other moments that you thought would make this documentary really useful to watch? Uh, I, I just think that the sequencing of it, to see, for instance, that Hamas came first, then the other militias came second, and then the freelancers, mm. and, and who may well have raped the uh, odd individual woman. Rape and war, unfortunately, go together. Uh, no one's pretending it didn't happen at all. But what is absolutely clear is that this was not in, an intended uh, rape uh, or orgy, if you like, the purpose of Hamas and the other militias was clear, to capture as many people, to take them back as hostages. Uh, they clearly didn't think that this might be the pretext for ethnic cleansing of the whole of Gaza, uh, and that is a, a political mistake that they made, uh, without a doubt. But uh, uh, <coughs> we can see that they wanted hostages, and of course they captured them in a not too uh, nice or gentle a fashion, but you would expect that. I mean, the documentary also shows that um, there is almost like um, a wild firing at people by the Israeli army once it's got going. And there's, you know, well, that's the other thing. I mean, yeah, military yeah. experts saying, you know, they've they've shot their own hostages quite clearly. Well, I mean, it's not an overwhelming numbers, it has to be said, but there was clearly, you know, a lot of confusion. Well, we don't know. We don't know what the numbers are. What we do know is that about midday, the Hannibal directive was put into operation. And this is a kind of, you know, 
this is a kind of Nazi doctrine that uh, it's better to kill your own people than let them take, be taken captive because then they can be exchanged for uh, prisoners. I mean, I mean it's, it's an unbelievable thing which puts no value by the Israeli state, even on its own Jewish citizens when it comes to it. That in, instead of doing everything possible to rescue them, they, they say it's better to kill them. Uh, why? Because they don't want to let Palestinian prisoners out free. And uh, that, in essence, it, is what it's about. And that's what, what the invasion of Gaza is now. They're more interested in killing Palestinians than saving their own captives. And that tells you really everything about the morality of the Israeli state. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the day, the helicopters strafed concert goers. There, there's, there was more that, that wasn't shown. There were cars piled up on a highway by the festival, uh, and they seem to have been just a, a turkey shoot. Uh, we don't know how many uh, cars were hit, uh, but there were very considerable numbers. I mean, whether it's half or a third or a quarter, the fact is that of the 700 odd Israeli civilians, a large number were killed by their own people, including nearly all of those at Kibbutz Berry, which was 121, I think. Well, I mean, the, the documentary doesn't actually make that claim. Um, they they no. only went out a few 20 something unexplained reasons. So they, they, they are treading very carefully to not be sued, I guess, or whatever, but there's probably more, you think, yeah. Well, Kibbutz Berry lost 120, I know that. Uh, and tank shells were fired into every single house. Mm. Uh, and obviously, if you fire a tank shell into a house, you kill the people in it. And that's what happened. Uh, and the damage that was done, you know, we, we saw early on, we saw, you know, people kind of frozen, black, charred bodies in cars. And this was attributed to Hamas. But we know now they didn't have the weaponry to do that. Mm. That was Hellfire mass missiles. Uh, from the helicopters, the Apaches that were circling above. So, I mean, a considerable number were killed by the Israelis on the day, including actually quite a lot of soldiers. They bombed their own bases. They bombed the Erez Junction, for example. So uh, we will never know. We will mm. never know. And the Israeli army doesn't want to investigate that part of it for obvious no, reasons. That, that became clear as well. There's the UN <laughs> wants to send a, a unit in to investigate the, the, the claims of mass and systematic rape, and they still not be allowed no. in. And it's quite powerful to hear them say that, you know, we've tried and we've tried again and we're not allowed in. So that shows really... Um, well, they've, destro they've destroyed all the forensic evidence. They just buried the bodies. They didn't mm. take any until they let these religious uh, messianic nuts from uh what's it what's the group uh i can't remember now uh zaka that's right zaka, yeah who have no training whatsoever are on the far right uh and who just lied i mean you saw that guy who just lied lied and lied again yeah he, he swore he saw all these beheaded babies and so mm. on and they weren't even there. They didn't have. He says he, he's showing a picture on his mobile phone to the journalist, isn't it? Because he doesn't want to show it on on camera. And the journalist goes, "Well, where where's that baby? You know? Oh, it's over there. Can't you see it? No, I can't see. So it's all bullshit, isn't it? He's he's yeah. exposed himself quite quite beautifully on that in that film. And then he but, says, anyone who questions uh, what he says uh, should be killed. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Thanks very much, Tony. It's a very worthwhile okay. um, documentary to watch. Uh, everybody should. Yes, indeed. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Tony. Thanks very much.